guys, we got this great clip from one of our long content videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. For anybody out there listening, go to investment clubs, meet investors, like all kinds of investors. They'll tell you what they're up to. It's such a great experience. I went to this investment club. I didn't have any passive income. I didn't own anything. Um, and I was put in a group and we were, there was one guy that owned something in LA. He had inherited it. There was another guy that owned um, something in uh, another state. And there was another guy that owned something in another country, South America. Wow. And he was like, it blew me away, right? It just blew me away. And I remember coming, driving home that night and thinking, wow, how can these guys own these things some, you know, so far away? And then I was like, it's all about risk, right? You have to assess what you feel is risky. You have to do, you know, it's risk tolerance, right? And I was like, well, how do I mitigate that? How do I, you know, make that a little more accessible to me? And for me, I was like, well, I think I need to really study the place. And real estate is a relationship business. I need to make relationships in these markets mm. and be very conscious about making the relationships. And, and so that's what I did. I actually went into the Memphis market. I evaluated markets. Memphis was a really great cash flowing market. It still is. It's a great cash flowing market. And um, I bought my first house. It took me, <laughs> I'm going to say like a year and a half to buy my first house because I was fearful. I didn't know what I was doing. And that's you after know, your $100,000 flip? Or <laughs> that's <laughs> after my $100,000 flip. I sat on it. I sat on the money. Uh -huh. It was funding, it was funding more flips here. You know, I was doing, I did another one, but I was like, researching and trying to get into it and I, I finally I met this one investor at an investment club that said I've seen you here for a year and you're not doing anything mm. um, yeah and he was I've great seen people like that before Deborah. I, and I would ask the question how, how do you get away from that analysis by paralysis or analysis paralysis um, the, the constant learner right I, I, okay, I, so Robert, I, you, you do this for people because I do this for people now because he did this for me he said to me, I want to know a date that you're going to receive your first passive income check. Oh my gosh. She was a and I said, I, I said, a date? That's what? But at the same time, I felt challenged and I was like, okay. And I, you know, okay, it'll take me this long to figure it out and close the deal and get a renter in and okay, this is the date. And honestly, that date came and went for him. He, he had no idea what I said. But it didn't for me, you know. Like yeah. I was like, I'm doing it. I did text him and say I did it. <laughs> I, I love, so that's what we advertised that we would talk about is kind of like how would you have the courage to go into new markets, right? So you you did it, and you just explained how you did it. I, I think the guy who gave you that advice, I hope you're still in touch with him, but he yeah. was he was a, a gift from God, right? Like that that is amazing encouragement and now you do that for other people i do so cool especially to see people it. swirling around not yeah. doing it and that's what i was doing yeah. you know and we see that all the time because it it takes a certain amount of courage to sit up through it and listen to this and anybody who out there who's swirling and after i did my first one i bought three more within the year nice because I understood the process now. Nice. Right? I stepped through it and then I'm like, wait a minute, that wasn't so hard. Like I can, I can do this. Yeah. You know? And the belief, hello, we're stocking mindset again. Yeah. And the belief that I could do it, went into it, you know? The belief comes by doing, right? Like, so you did it, now you believe you can do it. Or you believed you can do it, so you did it. Either <laughs> matter. You have that belief and it comes, it's great. I tell yeah. people all the time now, to come with a different strategy, right? Like, so everybody wants to get into wholesaling and flipping. And I think it's a great, you know, starter course. I kind of, I, I kind of look at it as like, you're, you're learning to ride a bicycle and you've got training wheels on, you're, you're a wholesaler and you're in business. You can make a lot of money with that. But I tell people to, you know, buy three properties and sell two, keep one and fight like hell to keep that one, right? Like just decide early on, right away, that you're going to keep things. I wish it was something that I had told myself when I was starting out, I'd be, I'd be way further along than I am, but life is still good. I'm not complaining. No one, no one should feel bad for me. 
it's just a lesson that I learned over the years, right? Once, once I started keeping real estate, uh, life changed and it changes pretty quickly. Like real estate's a long game, but hang on to a piece of property for five or 10 years. There's, there's no better strategy than owning something for a long time. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching that. Subscribe to our channel, watch this next, and then also check out the pinned content for more great content, guys. God bless.